Well, ladies and gentlemen, less than 24 hours ago before Celtic played Motherwell at Fair Park in the league. A lot of anxiety going into this game. A lot of no excuses, just win. And we're going to talk about the club's revenue. We're going to talk about Chris Sutton. We're going to talk about Peter Lawwell. And we're going to talk about different other things as well. That's going to be raising the bar. I've been quiet the last couple of days. I've been brainstorming and thinking about how I'm going to do this video. Thinking about what's right and what's wrong. At the end of the day, I'm a Celtic fan. I do this podcast. I say a lot of things that are accurate and I say a lot of things that are not on the point because I just feel it from the heart. Thursday night, I went to an event in Grace's Irish Bar held by the Celtic Trust. The Celtic Trust, just if you don't know who the Celtic Trust are. They're a shareholders of the club of 3% at the moment. Their objectives to hit 5% so they can call AGMs and raise concerns to the boards and hold the, the board accountable in some aspects of certain resolutions and certain things that the, cl the club are not doing accurate. Now, we all know last night, if you're waiting around or you haven't checked social media, the club issued a statement, 85 menu revenue from the previous year. From the previous year. So we're up 11% revenue. 60, 67.3 million in the bank. In the bank, that should really hit you, salt in the wounds and the lack of spending. It's like watching Tam from Steel Game, penny pinching, penny pinching Peter Lawwell. There's 10% Celtic fans out there that tap this current board on the back and say, Well, Keith, you are being spoiled. We've had treble upon treble, four trebles in the space of 12 years, and you're moaning about the current board while we're up revenue or they're doing good jobs filling their pockets, but it's not. They're not filling the pitch with quality, folks, with quality. And I described this so many times on the channel. If we want to move forward as a club and go past the domestic side, which at the moment we're struggling to win the league because we keep shooting ourselves in the foot, and that's blending to be accountable, the recruitment to be accountable most of all, and the board being accountable because they make the big decisions. They bring the manager in. They, they hired his head of recruitment, which is Peter Lawwell, hiring his son, Mark Lawwell, you know, Gordon Strachan, son, Gavin Strachan. You know, it's all it's all mad situation. I know Gordon's not on the board, but it's a job for the boys. It's a job for the boys. And Chris Sutton had called it out and basically said, he's bringing up this whole malarkey of English football. English football has nothing to do with Scottish football. Lawwell blame the landscape of the transfer window in England to why Celtic weren't productive in the market in the last window. He also stuck out, which I've been saying so many times on the channel, about the recontracting of Matt O'Reilly, Carmen Carter Vickers, Callum McGregor, Rio Atate, Anthony Ralston, Stephen Welch, you know, players like that, the Coyogo. They always have to put that there. Folks. They're being penny pinching and it's they're sleeping at the wheel. They're sleeping at the wheel because Joe Hart came out and said that this has been on his on his mind for a while, that he was bound to retire at the end of the season. Brendan Rogers said it in the interview yesterday that he had this discussion a while back, and this is what he was going to do. He just needed the time and to announce it. So if they knew this, why are they not being productive in the last window and getting a keeper in? Because they're blaming the current market. They're blaming the lack of activity, FFP and all this malarkey. Folks, I'm not buying this board's excuses. I sat there in Thursday night for two hours and I had different podcasts. I had a trust telling me, show me stats, show me what's going on. And I, it makes more sense to me. Dermot Desmond has up to 22 million worth of shares in Celtic. 22 million. And we're all saying Dermot Desmond this, Dermot Desmond that. He's 24% of the club's stake. Club stake. There's a company in London called Lindsay Train, who are a management company. Between the two of them, they have 50% of the club stake. What if they were to sell that tomorrow? Where, where, where would that leave Celtic in a position? Could be strengthened, could go worse. And as I said, look at the Barcelona model. The fans on the club. And these people on top claim that 
their fans and they're concerned and they're, they're not happy that there hasn't been enough enough activity in the window and they're blaming other reason. They need to blame themselves. They need to blame themselves. Why are they fill in their pockets when they can't do things right? They think by bringing revenue is doing the right thing right. Use the resources. You're claiming Barrowfield is upgrading, Lennox Sound's being upgraded, sports science. Do the most important thing, which is getting leaders on that pitch, bringing players in that want to play for the short. Not these flops from South America that are highly rated in their eyes and they come in, they don't do nothing. We haven't seen any connections with the seat group recently. It looks like that's gone. Our, our next... The three markets that we tap in is the Pacific market and the Japanese K League and the J League. We tap into Benfica's Youth Academy. We need to be realistic here. We need to be ambitious. And what I mean ambitious is getting a player, like a, a really good player in the championship, or get someone that's playing the Premier League and maybe, you know, hitting he's on the subs and he's not getting the, the football he could be. And we know the calibers there and they're young because goalkeeper situation is an absolute shambles. We need to keep her in in the summer. And I look, I wish Joe Hart the very best. I would criticize Joe Hart, but he's he's kicking, he's distributing the ball. We can't deny he's a good shot stopper, one of the best shot stoppers in the business for the last 20 years. It's brilliant in CV, playing for a club like Manchester City, going to win two Premier Leagues, says something. Being capped for England 75 times, says something. But it's the lack of ambition. It's the penny-pinching tactics from Lawwell from their Desmond. Folks, they don't feel the same level of concern as we do as the fans. And the fans that go on a weekly basis, that pay the season books, all they do is they have fancy titles, they wear fancy suits, and they make big decisions. And let, let's let be honest, they have made good, good decisions in the past, appointing some managers and buying some players. We can't fault that. But this particular season... And we go back to lockdown season, they're accountable. They are accountable for what they what the mess they caused because it's the lack of connection that they have with the fans. It's the lack of communication. It's statement FC. It's the statements that the fans get angry about. You you just for example, you go on to one of the latest Celtic posts of them showing of them doing progress to Barrowfield and everything's negativity from the fans. That broken connections there. If Celtic is more than just a club, one club since 1888, why are we not united? Why are we not united as a fan group? Why is that certain fans that tap the club on the back and say, keep going, Brendan, or keep going, Peter, or keep going, do this? We all want Brendan to succeed. As much as you don't like what Brendan Rodgers has done when he walked away in 2019, he's our manager. We need to back our team. But the way we need to back our team is we need to have that confidence in our team. We need to have that bit of quality in our team to turn around and say, right, these boys can, there's eight minutes left in the game, we can snatch a goal. Because at this moment in time, a lot of us are feeling that this current squad are not offering. Many of them are not offering. Players to come back, Carmen Carter-Vickers, Alistair Johnson are back. You know, Tate's to come back, Olding Holmes to come back, you know, he could be changed the system. Callum McGregor is not at the level he once was. And it breaks my heart saying it. Truly breaks my heart. He is beyond average this season. I'm grateful for what he's done in the past for wearing a Celtic short, coming through the youth academy, you know, learning the learning the roots from Scott Brown, getting that captain's armband, taking a boy storm, leading us into war, winning battles, winning us trophies. I'm grateful for that. But when a player is not at the races, you you, you need to be criticised, regardless of the past. They know, we need to look at what's currently going on. Callum McGregor, some fans are saying drop him. I think I would not, nowhere near drop him. At the end of the day, it's up to Brendan and sitting down with Brendan and saying, let's be honest here. Callum, we know your strengths. We know your weaknesses. A game. We need you more than ever. More than ever. If you're a leader and you want to be a part of Celtics history, and help us win this title because you were on that pitch when we dropped points. You were on that pitch when we lost the hearts. You were on that pitch when we, when we dropped points to Aberdeen away, to Hibs away. And all he done was lift his arms up in the air and trying to lift the boys. 
it's not good enough screaming down to her, into their ears show that rage in the face show how much you want it at the end of the day it's an institution which deserves success the money's in the bank and we want to use that money next summer i think a change of management will be needed because currently at the moment this regime of recruitment management the whole structure is an absolute shambles an absolute shambles it's just from when Ange left to now the fallen of our team the lack of positivity between the fans the broken connection between the board i don't even ever think it was ever there between the board and the fans it's just getting worse and worse and that's not trying me not trying to shit store this up and make this all about how i'm feeling i could see it in the comments i could see it from the concern i could see it the other night when other podcasts are saying very productive things and fair play to them fair play to the ones that turned up as i said on thursday night seven o'clock in graces go to the celtic trust open meeting all fans are welcome if you want to raise a concern and have an idea throw it at the guys on the panel five really good people on that panel very educated you know they've been around a long time they know the ins and outs they know what to say and at the end of the day these are people that are volunteers that sit down and put all this data together that make the effort to come out and present this to the Celtic faithful because they want the best thing for the club. At the end of the day, they strive and things are going bad when we're winning, no one wants to know about holding the club for accountable because we're winning. But when we're losing, we need, we need to be united. And if he's wanting an alternative option, as I said to you, have a look at the Celtic Trust website. There's an option in there. There's no point of moaning to me in the comments about sack the board and law well this and law well that i can't do nothing i can't do nothing about that if you want something to do something about it how about you 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 get in touch with the celtic trust and have a look at their philosophy their ideas how about you go and buy a share or buy more shares and how about you go to these agms and make sure the address is up to date of what originally when you bought that share and making sure you're getting the right data that's what you need that's what you need we can watch 10,000 podcasts and blame the board and nothing will change at the end of the day you're just a number making numbers for them to put out these fancy fancy revenue statements that's all you are that's all you are just remember that just remember that at the end of the day you might have 10,000 shares in the club or you might have one jersey that you bought merchandise you're just a number to them you're just peasants so just remember that folks it hurts me saying that because we all love the club. We all want a successful season. We all want to see Joe Hart going out in the hoy, you know, winning a double, and hopefully we can get fans across Brent. Because as I said, at this moment in time, I'm going to truly, truly say this before the Motherwell game, 90% of me believes we're not winning this league. And there's that 10% that I, from you, that I see on social media that convinced me to say, keep the faith, Keith. Keep the faith. We've been in a position like this before in 2007, but we had better leaders then. And if these guys want to be leaders and win this title, they need to step up and win this league. They need to polish Motherwell. They need to polish, polish Libby. They need to polish Hearts at Twine Cast. They need to polish Rangers for the remaining two games. They can't keep sleeping at the wheel. That's from top down to bottom. And if they want to be ambitious about next season, about getting a good goalkeeper in, getting a good centre back, getting a good forward, and but actually letting Brendan Rodgers be vocal and actually put his words onto the pitch and getting a bit of quality there. Talking to the pitch is the most important thing, folks, for all fans. And we're not seeing enough of that from the players, from the lack of goals, from everything. Most of our goals that came from our midfield this season because our forwards have been absolute dire. Because it's the lack of service, the lack of confidence, the system's changing. It's all there. I've said it so many times on the channel, folks. A change is needed. Chris Sutton is right to call out Peter Lawwell and the board for the excuses, the transfer excuses. As I said, the money's there. Put where the money where it is at your mouth and put it on the table and gamble. There's no point in playing safe cards because safe cards is going to hit you back in the face. And if we don't win this league, that's 60 million down. And they won't be they won't be all happy next this time next year putting a revenue out saying, Oh well, we were down. Just down to disappointment of actually not clinching the league for the third year in a row. Disappointment of not winning the Scottish Cup. It can all change. It can all change. In my 
I feel right now, as much as we're past that through the season, in my mind, it's half time. We're now in second place. Now it's the wake up call. Now it's the wake up call. We need to stop thinking of what they're doing, what who they're playing, and what decisions will go for them. We need to think about what we do. We need to think about Celtic fans of all them amazing fans that travel to them games home and away. We need to think about getting behind our squad. And I know it's hard because you're not seeing the most productive football on the pitch. I know it's hard when you're sitting there and you're nearly falling asleep looking at the games. I understand that. I completely understand that as a fan. And I'll be honest with you, I'll be brutally, truly honest with you. I watched that game last week and in the 18 minute I fell asleep. And I woke up three minutes after full time and I seen the result and I was like straight away on the Twitter, looked at the goal and I was broken. I was broken. I felt like defeat because it's the it's the manner of the players. It's the sign language of the manager. It's the, it's the post match reactions. It's the lack of connection there. There's so much devoid at the moment on our manager that has been devoid of our manager for years. When he left and he came back, and I just want us all to, you know, we all. We're all, we all make a statement together. If we're all boasted by the best fans in the world when we go to Seville or when we attend, we're like we're up there the most highest attended games in the per season. Why can we not do it when the club needs us, when the team needs us the most? There's no point in having empty seats at Celtic Park because you're sitting there and you're at podcast and fans are turning around saying, what about all these empty seats? Are these season ticket holders that are just not ours going because it's wet, the weather? Hello, it's Scotland. The weather's poor in Scotland. If I had a chance to go to them games, folks, and if I didn't get to go home every weekend to see my kids, I'd be at them games. I'd be like a kid at Christmas going to them games. And I know it's a long 17 minutes of me ranting about the similar stuff that I talk about all the time, folks, but I'm concerned. I'm very concerned because... As I said, the people at the top don't care about you. They just care about this coming in. And they need to start spreading that cash out and getting a player that's five or six million. Because I asked a question to Quinny the other night of Celta here. Nice guy. Quinny, shout out to you. I said to Quinny, I said, Quinny, how much do you think we're going to spend on a keeper in the summer? And you know what Quinny said to me? It'd probably be a free keep. Probably two million max. I said, no, when you think about five million, kids, let's not kid yourself here. And he was right. I had a talk about it. You know, when I got home, I wasn't drinking, had an iron brew. And I said to myself, you know what? That's what's going to be the real. This is this is the, the model of Celtic. The real, I guess, someone that's about to retire two years to go. And, and look, Joe Hart done a good job, but I'm, I'm concerned about the spending power of our club. We have the ammo there. There's no point of a battle, people running at the castle, shooting cannons at the castle, and we have all the ammunition and just letting them come to the, come to the castle and we're not defending the right. We're not defending this title right, folks, and let's be honest about it. So there's my 18-minute rant. I hope you do subscribe. I hope I don't lose subscribers. And that the ones I lose to subscribe to, these are the 10% of fans that are back on the board that are actually clearly, clearly look at the green tins and see they look at the past. They look at the trebles. They look at the leagues. They don't think about what's going on now. They just think it's going to fly over. So they're going to win every game. No, hard work pays off. So leave it there, folks. Hopefully we'll see change maybe in the next while. So Celtic Trust, have a look at them. Hell, hell.